there are five things that people commonly do that they end up regretting after buying solar. And in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through these five things so that you can avoid them and make sure that your solar experience is the best that it can be. And the best part about all of these things is that they're super easy to prevent as long as you watch the video through to the end. Coming in at number five of the most common regrets that people have after buying solar is going to be not actually purchasing their solar panel system. You might be thinking, well, what are you talking about, Jack? Of course, when I go solar, I'm gonna own my system. System. However, unfortunately, in a lot of cases, that is simply not the case. The reality is in 2024, we are seeing more companies than ever before selling third-party ownership systems, oftentimes called power purchase agreements. A fancy way of saying lease, a power purchase agreement essentially puts you into a rental agreement with your solar system. You sign a leasing contract with the solar company, they install the system on your roof, and you make them a monthly rent payment every single month, which will escalate by about 3% every single year. Now, due to high interest rates in 2024, lease are being offered more than ever and the reason being is that they're going to give homeowners the lowest initial monthly payment above other options such as financing or purchasing however there are a couple things homeowners need to watch out for when leasing a solar system the first thing to know is that if you lease your solar system you will not be eligible for any federal or state tax credits such as the 30 percent solar federal tax credit because well you don't own the system. Secondly, while there is typically a low initial monthly payment, that payment is escalating at a rate of 3% on average year over year for the entire term of 20 or 25 years. Therefore, towards the end of your term, you will likely be looking at a payment that is over double of what it was in year one. And lastly, and probably most importantly, and what makes a lot of people regret moving forward with these systems is that they can lead to a number of issues when selling your house. You see, when you own your solar system and you move, the process is fairly simple and you're presented with a couple of options. You can simply have the system paid off and then add the appraised value of the system to the sale price of the house, or you can have a contractor deinstall and reinstall your panels and equipment on your new residence and have the old roof patched or replaced for the new homeowners. With leasing, however, this gets a lot trickier. Selling a residence with a lease system typically involves having the new homeowner take over the lease contract for the system. The reason is because one of the big issues with leases is that lease contracts make it so the only financially viable thing to do is to make monthly payments for the duration of the lease and not pay off early. Reason being, early prepayment penalties will be steep, and while they will give you the option to buy out the system after 5 or 10 years, what they deem as fair market price to buy the system is often very inflated. Now, ask any real estate in areas which solar is popular, and they will tell you horror stories about people not being able to sell their house with leased solar systems on the roof potential prospects walking away because of the solar, and others not being able to get approved for both the mortgage and the lease during closing, leading them to not being able to buy the house. Overall, big no-no. Moving on to number four of the most common regrets that people have after buying solar is going to be not having a well thought out designed solar system. Now, unfortunately, since there's not much regulation in this industry as far as required education that solar representatives need to have in order to design and sell solar, I see all the time systems constructed that do not make sense at all for maximizing production and benefits. To give you guys an example of this, after only a couple minutes of browsing aerial footage from Google Maps in the San Diego area, I found a system designed as such. What do you think is the issue with this designed solar system? Well, let's start off with the obvious fact that the panels have only been put on the eastern face of the roof, meaning that the production of the system will likely only be substantial enough to power the house from the hours of around 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. If we go into our software and look at the irradiance mapping for this house, we find that that the majority of the sun will actually be shown on the southern face of the roof, which was completely avoided. To add on to the fact, we're in the San Diego market, which charges nearly double the cost of power in the later afternoon hours from around 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Wouldn't it be beneficial to have some panels on the western face of the roof where the sun will be shining during those afternoon hours? 
I guess they did not think so. This is only one example of many badly designed systems, either due to uneducated solar representatives or even companies that are lazy, don't care about their customers, and want to sell a system that can be quickly installed with just one large array on the biggest roof face. Choosing to avoid installing panels on the front of your house is understandable, but in most cases, if you want a design that is going to maximize production from the panels and maximize your daily independence from the grid, that is going to mean multiple separate arrays on different areas of the roof with putting the majority of the panels on the south face followed by the west and east face just taking into account the daily utility rates when determining panel placement. Now on that conversation of designing properly and moving on to number three of the most common regrets that people have after buying solar is going to be not picking the right amount of panels to buy for their system. The process of working with a solar designer typically involves giving him or her a copy of your annual kilowatt hour usage and then having them use a software were to determine how many panels you might need for your house to offset your electric bill. Where this can go wrong is not taking into account future higher or lower usage. Something such as adding an electric vehicle, which you're going to charge at the house, having plans to reinsulate your house, or potentially having three kids move out of the house to go off to college, these things can have a massive impact on your future usage. While in most cases, if you overproduce electricity, you can sell that power back to the utility company for credit, you're still paying for more panels panels that you ultimately do not need. Now, if you want to undersize your system slightly and add panels in the future, that can work. However, you will get the best pricing on your overall system on a price per panel basis. If you can just do it all in one project to avoid having to do two separate projects, which permits have to be pulled, engineered plans designed, and crews called out to the house. Make sure to communicate your current and future energy habits with your solar consultant and make sure that you're playing things smart. Now, one thing that I have seen people make a mistake with is moving forward with a quote that has been designed on a cheap solar design software. A little secret that I'll tell you guys is that unfortunately there are many cheap solar design softwares out there which typically over promise the production of a system as they do not take into account all of the things which affect solar production such as shading, lidar, and the path of the sun. If you have received a solar proposal and the design image looks like a bunch of black rectangles on a satellite non-3D image of the top of your house, that design is likely not taken into account many factors and could be over promising what the system will produce. Look for a design that uses technologies such as 3D imaging, irradiance and lidar, shade metrics, and one that takes into account the path of the sun throughout the day, as for that design will likely project the most accurate numbers as far as what the system will actually produce. And by the way guys, if you are in the process of shopping for different solar options for your home and you would like to get one of these advanced designs, or maybe you already have a few bids and you would simply like to get a comparison quote just to make sure that you're getting a good deal, feel free to reach out to us by using the link below the video in the description and you can see if we can provide insulation services to your state and then from there you can book a quick call where we can provide you with one of these designs and proposals for your desired solar project. Now moving on to the second to last common regret that people will typically have after buying solar is going to be not making a system that is forward compatible. As I mentioned earlier in the video you will never really know what your plans are going to be and whether or not you'll want to add panels or potentially even batteries to your system later down the road. And so the best decision that you can make to protect for this is by designing a system that's going to be forward compatible. Designing a system that's forward compatible will oftentimes come in your decision of which inverter system to purchase. There are particular inverter systems which will only allow you to pair their battery with the inverter. The SunPower inverter is an example of this. And so having an inverter solution like Enphase or Solar Edge, which allows you to pair multiple brands of batteries with their systems, can protect you against this. We are now seeing certain manufacturers come out with EV chargers and batteries, which can only be compatible with their inverter, so it's more than ever important to be picky about which inverter solution you'll want to work with and which manufacturer you'll want to work with, as for it could limit which batteries and other products you can add onto the system. And finally last, and maybe the biggest regret of all that people have when going solar, is going to be working with a contractor who eventually goes out of business. 
Now, as important as it is to purchase a system that uses quality equipment, all while being offered at a very good price, ultimately, the most important factor in your decision of going solar is going to be working with a reputable contractor who's going to be in business for the long haul. You see, when you go solar, one of the most valuable components of your system is going to be the warranties that you're offered. You will typically have a warranty package, which will have 10 to 25 year labor warranties, roof warranties, and potentially even production guarantee warranties. But the caveat that you need to realize is that the warranties that you have with the company is only as good as long as that company is in business. Unfortunately, we have in this industry a lot of what we call fly-by-night contractors who get into solar, sell a bunch of systems, often offered at a very competitive price, and then after about five to 10 years, shut down shop, close doors, and go out of business, disappearing after they have a substantial amount of systems that they have installed under warranty that they will eventually need to service. They do this in order to make a quick profit on installs and then avoid having to burden the cost of when they'll need to begin doing service calls for homeowners as the systems age. While you cannot always predict contractors who will do this or eventually go out of business, there are a couple of basic rules that you can follow in order to avoid this happening. Firstly, it's always good to work with a contractor who's been in business for at least 10 years. This often weeds out a lot of fly-by-night contractors and ensures you're working with somebody who has experience installing solar and did not just add installing solar as a service after specializing in roofs, for example, or home electrical prior. Secondly, I tend to recommend working with national contractors who install over multiple states as they're often more diversified and stand a better chance of staying in business altogether if sales happen to drop in one particular state or region. We have, for example, seen in California for the last year or two, more than half of residential solar contractors go out of business after state policy went away with incentives for rooftop solar, though most of the large nationwide contractors who had sales coming in from all across the country were able to keep their doors open in the state. Now, the problem with talking about these five regrets that people have when going solar is that it simply does not cover everything that you need to know when making an investment into solar panels for your house. There are many other things that you need to know before going solar, such as avoiding scams. So make sure you check out my video going over the five most common solar panel scams to avoid in 2024, which will pop up on the screen now. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.